Hey, how's it going? And welcome back. Okay, so we're going to be looking at one of the most expensive releases for Creation Club to date, and that's Saints and Seducers. And this mod comes in at a whopping 1500 credits, around $15 or £12. The art is supported by Eleonora and additional design by Chris Takahashi. This mod is more or less one huge Shivering Isles Easter egg and gives you new quests and loads and loads of stuff. So let's have a quick peek at what you get then. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here and let's start with a quick look at the two main quests. Now this mod is essentially split into two parts, the first being Balance of Power followed by Restoring Order, each offering different quests, loot and rewards. And really this mod is all about the stuff you get. So we'll do a quick overview of the quests and then concentrate more on the gear and rewards. And we'll start with Balance of Power. Now this starts with you speaking to Resab from a Khajiit caravan, who will give you a note explaining that recently his caravan has been attacked by strange new bandits wearing golden and dark armour. And your job will be to locate all the bandit camps and kill the bandits, and then learn the location of their leaders and dispense justice. I was almost getting uh, one-shotted by these guys, so uh, box clever. Finally, return to Resad for your reward, which is the huge sum of 300 gold. But don't worry about that, as you will pick up an absolute crap ton of loot on the way. Oh, and a quick FYI, make sure to read all the journals and notes as some of these start other quests. Now, if you've read all the notes, some side quests should have started. Now, one probably won't be in your quest list, and that is how to learn to smith the gold and dark armor and weapons, obviously. So it's important that you should have found and read Yoften's notes on golden and dark smithing found on one of the bandits you killed, and we'll talk about that later. I'll mention another side quest you'll get, and that is to find Nerve Shatter. However, to complete this, you will need uh, Amber and at Madness Ore, but you won't be able to get that till you complete the second part of this mod. So I suggest you put this on the back burner for now. And again, I'll talk about this later. Okay, so what do we get from Balance of Power? Well, you get the option for two new pets, or two Elytra nymphs to be precise. The Manic Elytra Nymph can be found in the First Saints Bandit Camp, while the Demented Elytra Nymph can be found in the First Seducers Bandit Camp. You can harvest a Mystic Venom from either of the Elytra pets called Mystic Venom, oddly enough. And this does five points of damage to health and magic for four seconds, and you can coast your weapons with it. But the real bonus for these two are the powers they give you and are activated with your shout control. The Demented Elytra Nymph gives you improved combat skills for five minutes, basically Fortify 2 or One-Handed and Fortify Marksman. The Manic Elytra Nymph gives you a target won't flee for five minutes and they get extra health and stamina, a bit like the Rally spell. So they're kind of handy, but these will only allow two pets at a time. So if you have a Reekling, a dog, or say Goth the Goblin, you can only bring one of these along as well. If you want both of them, then you'll have to get rid of your other pet. 
you will also pick up quite a few other bits and bobs, most important of which are the Rare Curios ingredients, as the Rare Curious mod is included with Saints and Seducers. Now, these are rare and expensive, so whatever you do, don't forget to pick them up. Now, speaking personally, I think Rare Curios is one of the best Creation Club mods to date, so getting this included with this mod is a real bonus. And if you've never come across a Rare Curious mod before, I've done a couple of videos on it, so go and check them out if you like. Now, you will be picking up a massive amount of armour and weapons at this stage, hence I would advise you to find a place to store them uh, as you progress through the story. You literally will be picking up that much. Um, you'll find one heavy set, which is a Golden Saints, and one light set, which is a Dark Seducers. Uh, normally I go through all the specs, but in this case to save time, there's so much uh, to go through. I've left a link to all weapon and armour specs in the video description below. And we'll start off with the armour you get from the Dark Seducers. Uh, dark armour and weapons are the serpentine equipment used by the Dark Seducers. And when compared to glass armour, dark armour is lighter but offers slightly less armour value, giving you an armour rating of 93 and a weight of 13 with a shield, and a rating of 70 and a weight of 9 without a shield. The weapons are around about the same, uh, being uh, lighter than glass and offering about the same damage as glass um, and ever so slightly less damage with the two hand weapons and bows. Now to make dark armour weapons you require the Daedric smithing perk, ebony, daedra hearts, quicksilver and leather strips and all dark items can be upgraded using one quicksilver ingot. And we also get the golden armour and weapons, which are the avian themed equipment used by the Golden Saints. The armour is heavy and is on par with orcish equipment, but lighter, giving you a total armour rating of 118 and a weight of 63 with a shield, and a rating of 92 and a weight of 51 without. Golden weapons are lighter but slightly inferior to glass weapons apart from the two-handed which are lighter but give the same damage output. To make gold armour and weapons you require the Daedric smithing perk, gold, Daedra hearts, moonstone and leather strips. All golden items can be upgraded using one gold ingot. And a bit of a spoiler alert here, um, as we mentioned before, smithing these armours is learned by reading Yoften's journal, so make sure you do that. The journal will guide you to a chest under the bridge at Half Moon uh, Mill. However, they do require the Daedric smithing perk and some of the resources required are actually very rare and expensive. Now this means you're going to need a level of 19 smithing to get your Daedric perk and using valuable Daedra hearts. For example one full set of armour plus the full range of weapons including 24 arrows. You will need 14 Daedra hearts for the Dark Seducer set and the same for the Golden set. Um, unless you really want to smith this stuff I'd simply suggest you keep it all and just upgrade it the best you can and save your perk points. Anyway, that's the first part of this mod done and there's much, much more to come in the second part which is called Restoring Order. Now, whilst doing the Balance of Power quest, at some stage you will learn that the Saints and Seducers are being funded by a mad conjurer named Thoron who is living in the sewers in solitude. So head over there, fight your way through the sewers and eventually you come to Thoron's lair where you'll have to deal with him. Uh, it can be quite a tough fight. Um, make sure to loot his body for a unique madness helmet and some other stuff including some new conjuration tomes. Now there's an awful lot of rare and unique items in here so make sure you grab them all and again read the notes and journals. And this is where you find the new location, the sewers underneath Solitude, uh, which is full of new creatures including the Corrupted Spriggan and the Electra Nymph, both of which are hostile and I believe only found in this location. And you'll also find lots of rare ingredients and other bits and bobs. And quick FYI, the Root Tunnel Dungeon tile set this dungeon uses was actually built into the base game and is now fully available as a modder's resource. And just a heads up, do not forget to grab the Sword of Yigalag and be sure to loot the nearby table of the Rare Madness Ore, which is needed for another quest. Additionally, be sure to read the notes 
on Amber and Madness Ore to obtain a miscellaneous quest to unlock the secrets of forging Madness and Amber gear and also do not forget the many hollow tree stumps throughout the dungeon as they usually contain Amber, a rare material needed to craft Amber arms and armour. And as with Balance of Power, there are a couple of side quests to complete. Well, three if you include finishing the Nerve Shatter quest. Uh, first up is a miscellaneous quest to find out about Amber and Madness smithing. And you'll be sent to the area north of Mistwatch, just east of the Atronach Stone. Very close uh, by to where you pick up Shadowrend for those of you that have that mod. And there you'll have to deal with Avithra, which who is an arcane blacksmith, to get a journal which you have to read to learn how to craft these new armour and weapons. And make sure you loot around for lots of goodies such as the unique arcane blacksmith's apron, quite a few enchanted weapons, some um, amber ore and quite a bit of other bits and bobs actually. And next up is Starder's Quest and I'll go into this uh, quest in a bit more detail as there's something here a lot of people have missed. Now after completing Restoring Order you will be approached by a courier and given the note a request to meet under Solitude's Great Arch and there you'll find a golden saint named Starder. Speaking with her, you can give her either the Shorgoroth, Shorgoroth shaped amber, or the sword of y Yigalag, or neither. Now, if you choose to give her either the amber or the sword, she will give you her helmet as a reward and then disappear. It's the same helmet no matter which item you give her. And if you decide to keep both items, and you should, she will turn hostile and you will have to fight her. However, if you do so and win, loot her camp for a few bits and bobs including her notes and they give you a solid hint on what to do next. And this is a thing that many people have missed and which is to head over to the Atronach Forge in the College of Winterhold at the Atronach Forge using the Sheargore shaped amber, a ruined book, a bliss bug thorax and a saber cat pelt will summon a spell tome which will teach you a master level spell that summons starter for 60 seconds. But do note the uh, Sheargore shaped amber will be destroyed when you uh, make this tome. Saying that, getting this spell is an absolute no brainer to be fair. And we come to the final side quest which we didn't complete before and that's getting nerve shatter. Now head over to Crystal Drift Cave where you may have to fight some leveled animals and after they've been dealt with you'll find the body of Gadnor on a stone beer alongside a small campsite. Now next to the campsite is a journal Gadnor's Last Wishes. In order to reveal the hammer, you must place one amber and one madness ore on the fire near Gadnor's beer. Oh, don't worry though, you can retrieve both the amber and the madness ore uh, once you're done. As soon as you pick up Nerve Shatter, a few Seducer bandits will show up and attack you. Anyway, we'll take a look at Nerve Shatter in a minute or two. But first let's take a look at all the other stuff you get from this mod, starting with soul tomatoes, which are tomatoes that act as a soul gem, equivalent to a grand soul gem indeed. Two can be found in Kinthor's camp on a stone table and they do respawn, however when I went to uh, charge a staff I wasn't given the option to use one of these, I haven't really had a chance to explore any further. And as well as getting the excellent rare curios uh, included with this mod, six new ingredients are also added to the game. As far as, I, as I'm aware, the following three can be found around Skyrim and may be purchased. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this to be so. And they are Bliss Bug Thorax, Green Butterfly Wing, Purple Butterfly Wing. And the final three can only be found in Solitude Sewers. And they are Rot Scale, Screaming War, and thorn hook and I'll probably do a video look into these in a bit more detail in the future. You'll also be getting three shiny new bugs in a jar if uh, that makes you happy. Uh, you get the uh, bliss bug and the green butterfly and the purple butterfly and I hope to be doing a, a separate short little video on where to find these later if I uh, remember. You also get a few unique items, starting with the Vithra's Arcane Blacksmith Apron, which is a uh, an apron with an added hood, which actually makes it unique, and allows weapons and armors to be improved 20% better. And apparently it can't be disenchanted. Um, you also get the Madness Hel Helmet of Recovery, which boosts restoration. You can also possibly get Starder's Helmet, which increases stamina by 70 points. Obviously you only get this if you hand over the Amber or sword which you really really shouldn't do 
and finally you get the ring of disrobing which simply removes your chestnut armor automatically for no apparent reason or rhyme um, if anybody knows uh, if i've missed something about this uh, then let me know in the comments below because I just can't see any reason for it maybe a bit of lore or something and you also get four new conjuration or summoning spells or five if you fought and kill Sarda which you really really should and these are a, a dark seducer archer a dark seducer warrior golden saint archer and a golden saint warrior now I believe these are equivalent to level 18 uh, not 100% sure on this if you know any different please post in the comments below and of course unless you have the sense of a snail you will now be able to conjure Stada, who is the most, most powerful version and I believe is a level 42 mainly two-handed and heavy armor uh, but her stats say she has archery and blocking skills health of 428 magicka of 100 and a stamina of 287 so definitely definitely worth getting in my opinion and for those of you still watching, I'm sure you'll be delighted to know we finally got to the armor and weapons at long, long, long last. Again, to keep the video shorter, I'm not giving the full stats here, but we'll leave a link in the descri video description so you can check them out. And we'll start with uh, Amber. Uh, amber armor is superior to a dragon scale armor, uh, making it currently the most powerful light armor you can craft in the game, giving a total armor rating of 119 and a weight of 25 with a shield and a rating of 88 and a weight of 15 without a shield the weapons have the same damage outputs as dragon weapons but are lighter and actually i think these are really nice looking weapons in my opinion uh, smithing amber equipment is learned by reading avithra's journal it requires glass smithing and advanced armor perks and therefore requires 70 in smithing to make amber armor and weapons you require amber moonstone sorry amber moonstone and leather strips weapon and armor can be upgraded with refined amber amber is rare but it can be found in the hollowed stumps in the root tunnels under solitude uh, solitude sewers in inventory of Khajiit caravan traders after receiving Risa's note on his new wares and possibly found as loot uh, uh, around Skyrim but I haven't I can't confirm that yet and that brings us to probably the best looking armor in this mod and that is bandus armor which is stronger but heavier than daedric giving you a total armor rating of 152 and a weight of 104 with a shield and a rating of 114 and a weight of 88 without a shield so it is actually quite heavy the weapons are better than dragon bone but so not only does it look good but it looks after you and de delivers one hell of a punch as well smithing madness equipment is learned by reading avithra's journal madness smithing requires 18 the smithing and the ebony perk and to make the armor weapons you will need madness and ebony ingots plus leather strips and you can upgrade everything with a madness ore now the downside of this armor is that madness ore itself is very very rare but it can be found occasionally in dungeon boss chests and in the inventory of Khajiit caravan trades after receiving Reset's notes on his new wares it may be found uh, you know, elsewhere but uh, i'm not sure about that yet and that brings us to the two artifacts mentioned before starting with the sword of yiglag which is an artifact associated with yiglag the daedric prince of order from the shivering isles now the great thing about this is it does not come with an enchantment which basically means you can enchant it yourself but I strongly recommend you don't enchant this until you've maxed out enchanting and can dual enchant and have maxed out your alchemy and have the appropriate perks to get the best fortify enchanting and smithing potions you can. A uh, quick FYI to upgrade this you'll need an ebony ingot and the daedric smithing perk uh, which makes upgrading it twice as effective. The stats are quite good dealing slightly more damage than the daedric greatsword but also being slightly heavier with a damage of 25 and a weight of 25 and I have to say it's a really cool looking weapon very stark but that works for me if I was a dual wielder I'd definitely consider using this one for sure and finally to the fantastically crafted nerve shatter which is an artifact composed of madness ore and amber it has a fairly generic enchantment where your target takes 30 points of shock damage and half as much magicka damage I, I really wish this, this had come unenchanted as you could make a fantastic weapon with it yourself 
That being said, it's much more powerful and lighter than both Daedric and Dragonbone Warhammers with a damage of 29 and a weight of 29. Now to upgrade Nerf Shatter, you'll need a refined amber and the arcane blacksmith perk and the daedric smithing perk makes upgrading it twice as effective it can't be destroyed to learn its enchantments and why to be honest why would you even think about doing that uh, to be honest i love this weapon i shouldn't as i usually go for more subtle things but this is a glorious weapon and really well put together definitely works well with the madness armor in my opinion and there you go, Creation Club's biggest mod to date. So what do I think then? I have to say Creation Club has uh, steadily been improving its content since it started a while back and this is definitely following that pattern. You're getting around about three to four hours of gameplay, maybe even more. Uh, depending on your character's level and whether you can fast travel etc. The quests are decent enough though they could be improved with custom dialogue but I guess that could be a little bit more complicated than we think. You certainly get a crap ton of stuff and the inclusion of rare curios is a really nice touch. Now I'm not really a fan of the dark or golden armour of weapons I think they really need to be reworked but they're fine as far as stats go. The amber armour again it really isn't to my taste but then again I don't like the sand of glass armor either so that's just a purely personal uh, point of view the madness and amber weapons on the other hand are absolutely fantastic superb modeling as is the madness armor itself and I'm probably being a bit unfair here and this actually is no criticism of the mod but I really wish there was a light version of the madness armor uh, we could smith as I, I never use heavy armor I like the new Solitude Sewers, they're kind of cool, though I wish it could have been turned into a new player home after the quest of finish. Uh, I, th I really think the mod author ma missed a massive trick there, in my opinion. Um, loved Yigalag and Nerve Shatter, very well crafted. Um, I'll, in fact, I'll go as far as to say in general, the whole mod is very well crafted. So, all in all, I really enjoyed this mod. However, we have to address the elephant in the room and that's the price. Now, in my opinion, $15 is more than a little bit excessive. I would have priced this anywhere between five and $7. And even though I really genuinely did like this mod, I'll still have to say that unless you have that kind of money to burn, I'd wait till it comes up on a sale at some stage and then grab it. And if you can get it at a decent price, then you've got a, you've got a very decent mod. Anyway, these are just my thoughts and I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you later. Love you.